Hey guys, so this video is a part of the 50 Rust project series. Uh, it's a playlist on my YouTube channel. Make sure you check it out. So this video is one of those. Now in this series, we have worked with JSON, serialize and deserialize, and we have also learned how to call, how to make a request to a URL. And in today's video, we are going to call a legit API. Uh, till now, we've been just calling uh, or making requests to normal URLs, but Today, we'll call a legit API, which is the GitHub API for repos. And we want to see uh, for this repo, right, how many people are uh, gazing, uh, as in stargazing, in the sense, how many people have starred this particular repo. So we can pass a repo and then we can see how many people are uh, stargazing. And this is the kind of response that you will get. So you'll get the users. Uh, so you know, it'll, it'll come out. So there are, there are many fields basically that come back as response, but we want only two fields. One is the login field. The other is the ID field for each user. So, the, so this is user one, this is user two, this is user three, user four, and so on. That like so many users have come. And we have received login, which is their user ID and uh, username and their ID. So only these two things we need. So with the help of Rust today, in today's video, you learn how to firstly make an API call. Uh, and then you learn how to substitute these values, which is the uh, the owner of the repository and the repository. Uh, and then you'll also learn how to create a struct to get specific data uh, using JSON serialization and deserialization. Now, if you have been following me for Golang videos, by the way, I have a 40 Golang project uh, video series on my YouTube channel. Check it out. Yeah, in case you followed those uh, with me, you know that uh, uh, languages like Golang and Rust they don't have native support for JSON. So you usually work with structs and then uh, the internet talks the language of JSON, right? Uh, and then when you work with them together, then you can use structs to tell uh, basically the, uh, like, like convert data from JSON into th the data that Rust understands or Rust can work with. And uh, this is why we'll have to define a struct called user, which will have this field and this field because these are the only two fields we want to work with, not the entire data that we'll get back from this API. Okay, that's how you work with structs. So having said all of that, and now that you have seen a little demo, by the way, this project is already ready. I'm Akhil Sharma 90 on GitHub. Make sure you follow me, make sure you check this uh, repository out. In case there are any issues or problems, uh, check out the repository and co copy those lines of the code which you're having problems with, compare your code with the repository whatever. This time uh, for the whole series, like for the whole 50 projects, I'm always building the projects, showing you these demos, putting them on GitHub, and only then I'm creating the videos, right? So uh, in the Golang part, I used to always build it along with you. I was never building it before and then shooting it because, uh, and, and many people had, uh, like it made many people nervous, nervous, right? People had a lot of problems with that. Uh, like, uh, especially the, the young guys, the junior developers, uh, they're, they're not able to, uh, uh, you know, they're not able to accept that there'll be so many mistakes and then you fix all those mistakes at the end. So here, what I'm trying to do is uh, so that the user experience, like you guys were watching it, uh, especially the junior guys for you, you know, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm trying to write uh, like, uh, what do you call it? Uh, you know, correct code from the beginning itself so that you don't lose, lose it, right? <laughs> Well, obviously the senior guys who have been doing this for like seven, eight years, you already know you can just write anything and just get away with it and then fix everything at the end. All right. Anyhow, uh, that out of the way, let's create a new project and get started. So here um, I am going to create a new folder and you just say cargo new. Sometimes it just slides down. So please don't worry if that happens. Cargo new and the name will be uh, API call yt okay that's what i'll call it yt for youtube and it'll create a new folder for me okay and, and i will cd into it i will say cd uh, api call yt and i will just open it up with my code editor okay all right so uh, my code editor has opened up on my screen but i think you can't see it uh, i'm using obs to stream this so let me try to change the window uh to um, yeah api call yt okay so now you can see it let me make the screen bigger as well so that everything is much clearer all right uh so here i'll say yes i trust the authors because i am the author so i trust the author obviously uh, and then 
what you want to do is in the in the cargo.toml file right you want to add some dependencies now none of these dependencies that we'll be adding right now are new dependencies these are something things like we have already used for example we have already used serialization and deserialization for json okay so um, i'm sure you appreciate what's happening here right what's happening here is that the projects we've built we worked with json uh, serialization deserialization both uh, we've worked with um, calling apis and then async async calling apis and now we're bringing those concepts together to call an API and also to work with structs and also to work with JSON, right? All three things together in this little video project. So, um, so there's a lot to learn here, but also that we have used these dependencies before. So here I'm going to use Surdy uh, version one with features for derive. So Surdy JSON, Surdy, both, I need both of these and I need request. So I need the request to make the request to the API, obviously, right? You have already seen that and I need to activate the feature called JSON. In case you don't want to type all this, um, you can, you feel free, free, free to basically get this from uh, GitHub directly. And then we need Tokyo, Tokyo, which we used in the last video to uh, make async requests, right? So we'll go ahead and save this now. Open up your main.rs file and you can uh, just remove everything from your main.rs file now, okay? And what you need to do is you need to basically say use surday, which is serialization deserialization, and here I need the deserialize ability. Then from request, I'll get error, and from request. I will get header and user agent. Now, uh, just in case you have already, uh, it, it's possible that you have not, uh, you know, followed along with my Golang, the, all the Golang videos. But in case, uh, so so in case you haven't, let me explain to you what what this does. User agents. Uh, so whenever you call these APIs, you have to mention user agents, which uh, help some APIs or some links that you call to know that uh, you know which place are these requests coming from. Uh, so especially in the Golang uh, scraping videos, you, you always have to set these kind of user agents. There are a lot of dogs in the background, so I hope uh, they're not troubling you too much. Like uh, it's not very distracting. So you have deserialize and debug here. And now comes the most important part, like one of the most important parts in this entire section, which is creating the struct user. So I've already talked about structs, right? But I'll explain to you again, structs basically are your own data types that you can create. So there are some data types that Rust uh, already understands, like for example, string, it understands U32, right? It understands these. But what if you wanted to use these type of data types to create a new data type on your own, a custom data type that, uh, you know, you can, you can like club these kind of things and then create a completely new data type that uh, now Rust will be able, to, uh, be able to understand because it understands these um, individual components individual data types. So now you have a struct called user which has login and ID. Login is string, ID is u32 and we have successfully built up a struct. Now this struct is required because when you work with JSON we need uh, only these two fields and with the help of struct we can do that. So Rust understands struct whereas the internet understands JSON. Now you'd already seen in the previous video how we made, uh, in case you haven't checked out the previous video please I, I highly recommend you check these out in a sequence all of these videos because they'll all make a lot more sense then so uh, we use tokyo main to create an async await uh, you know request so this is how you write async function in rust you say async function main and result then you say error out here Okay, now we will set our request URL. So request URL is equal to format. Now this format enables us to create the entire request URL in the sense to what URL do you want to make the request. So here we'll say HTTPS API dot GitHub dot com slash repos slash 
corner slash so here when you see something like this right this is uh, almost like uh, if if you've used uh, template literal and all of those things in in uh, in javascript they're very very similar to that basically the owner the value of the owner will be substituted here and you can actually set those as variables and similarly the va value of the repo out here uh, i'll write something called as repo that will also get substituted so we can set the variables for owner and repo here so here last will be stargazers now the the beauty here is i can feel free to change the owner and repo as i as i like as i feel like so here make sure when you write format at the end here put a comma because we want to add more things in this uh, uh, to this function we want to send more things so here we will also send uh, the owner now so owner is equal to rust lang nursery is the owner of the repo and then we will have the repo itself the name of the repo now this can be anything right uh, I, I i could also substitute this with me as the owner and my repos from my github but unfortunately not many people are uh, uh, stargazing my repos then, then not many people have starred my repos so uh, so i'll have to use some other <laughs> uh repo for this purpose um then what you need to do is you need to um yeah so we've closed this down and now we will simply print out so we'll say print ln and you will print out the request url so whenever you see something like this right this is basically going to take the value of this out here request url like that so the request url value will actually be printed like this that's why you've got these two curly braces so, so it's very very consistent right rust is not very complex it's very very consistent because you see those two curly braces everywhere then that means that this is going to be replaced by these actual values these actual uh, variables that you have defined okay um, once you get the hang of rust it will serve you really well it will um, it's, it's actually one of the best languages out there it'll serve you really well but you need to get a hang of it now we have to create a client that will help us create the request so we'll use request obviously the request create to, to create a client for us just like we have always done in the previous videos so create a new client here and then And then you create the response variable is equal to client. And on the next line, we'll say dot get. We want to make a get request. And here is where we want to talk about the request URL. We want to set the header. And for the header, we'll say user underscore agent. And here we can say anything. So we can let's say for for this instance we give it the name of rust web api client demo and then you say dot send dot await all right so uh you have already decided de defined a user struct but that won't help you to work with multiple users we, we have like you, you saw that there were 20 30 users in that response that you received back so just like in golang we used to have a slice of multiple structs here we have a vector of multiple structs so vector is very similar to slice it can just handle or hold multiple structs so we'll create a vector called users like multiple users will be a vector and it will be able to uh it'll, it'll basically be of type user user being the struct that you've already defined so that means that's going to be a collection of multiple users all following the struct type that you've already defined so response.json and you'll see out here dot await okay uh so remember it's an async function so everywhere you're saying whenever you're making a request you're saying await okay and then you will print out 
the all the users. So you'll say print ln and you'll print out all the users. And at the end, you'll say OK. Perfect. Very simple program. And now since you already have worked with serialization, deserialization, you already worked with users, already worked with uh, request, the request create, you've already worked with Tokyo and you've already worked with async and await functions, already call APIs before. All of those things have come together in this particular video, in this code. So if you're building slowly, our knowledge slowly, step by step. And uh, now what we'll do is, uh, we need to now run this program. So I will go ahead and change the window that you're seeing to my, uh, yeah, to my terminal. And here I can say cargo run, and it will take a while to run. So it's still building. So I will take a minute's break. My internet is not very fast. I'm in Goa. There's a place in India called Goa. I'm traveling. So you can see behind me is a Portuguese style villa that I'm staying at. <laughs> so it's not a vacation. I'm, I'm working from here. Internet is really slow. So I'll take a minute's break. I'll come back and you'll be able to see the build. And so I think you can see that it has stopped building now and we've received the response. Everything looks okay. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, in case you haven't subscribed, please do. And from the next video onwards, we'll be doing some little more fun projects. And soon we'll start also working with different type of databases like Postgres, SQLite, MySQL, Redis, MongoDB. All of that is about to come now. <laughs> so from 10, I think project number 10 to 20, there's going to be a lot of working with databases and the, that kind of stuff. And from 20 onwards, then we'll uh, 21 onwards, then we'll start working with uh, the specialized uh, frameworks like Rocket and Diesel and uh, all of those. So thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.